I usually, what, what I've done my whole career is I try to work in threes. The reason I say threes is because like, if you have a couple of reasons not to run, then you shouldn't run. If it's just one reason, well then it could be like laziness. If it's numerous reasons, then it's likely logic that you should rest. Okay, it's Saturday. I'm still dying, you can hear it in my throat. I'm actually starting to lose my voice. But Saturday is the day, well, this last month, Saturday has been the day that I need to upload all the videos to the Run and Masterclass. And so today starts with editing videos, then I have to go to a coffee shop to get good enough Wi-Fi to upload the videos. The beauty about that today is that it gives me a chance to focus on something different that is so, so important to have things going on in your life outside of just running. Of course, today could have been very, very stressful because I'm sick. I would have wanted to get up today, get some really good training done on a Saturday, but I know I should take it easy. I don't think today will be a rest day like yesterday, but at least I can have eight hours or so of the day to get healthier and then I can go run later. Aura Ring today said that my heart rate variability is coming up and my resting heart rate's going down. That means that I'm starting to get healthy. Okay, today's run was 10K, just like the other day. A um, little bit faster today, so 41 minutes and 50 seconds. I felt, yeah, a lot better. I, I, I sound worse, but I feel better. And so, I guess like, how do you know when it's um, the right time to start back running? Generally speaking, you'll either want to run or you won't. Normally when you're not that motivated and you don't want to run, it normally means there's a little bit of an illness still kicking around and motivation will return as you start to get healthier. So what I tend to do is split the difference. I realized that I can't rest forever. I remember a nurse at university telling me if we did nothing every time we got a cold, we'd never get anything done. So the general rule of thumb, rule, uh, the general rule of thumb is above the neck and you're okay. I know that my illness isn't brilliant, but I also know that it's not below the neck. I don't feel chesty um, and I don't feel like weak. I just know I sound like ass and I'm a bit nasally up top, but that's a good rule to go by. Okay, so the day is nearly over. Um, my throat still sounds terrible, but actually I feel really good. It's a bit like, uh, yeah, is it like Lazarus back from the dead? I'm um, feeling much, much better. Um, I guess I don't want it to be guilty of you guys watching two days in a row and not really learning anything. So um, the purpose of documenting every day was kind of just to show you what goes on. I don't know that I could have handled yesterday and today any better. This is about training for an Olympics. Training for Olympics doesn't mean that when you're sick, you still run 20 miles. Um, there was, I usually, what, what I've done my whole career is I try to work in threes. The reason I say threes is because like, if you have a couple of reasons not to run, then you shouldn't run. If it's just one reason, well then it could be like laziness. If it's numerous reasons, then it's likely logic that you should rest. And so yesterday, today I obviously ran, I did 10K, it was day two of having the illness and that was okay to run. But yesterday was the sort of first full day of the illness. I had already done three or four days in a row of running in this call it little comeback and so I was probably due an easier day. 
and aura ring was suggesting that you know things weren't right so green mucus aura ring a couple of days in a row probably time for an easier day that's what i mean by threes um just because it's like a journey to try to make the olympics doesn't mean that along the way there won't have to be easier days sometimes being the professional or trying to make the olympics is about being one of the more intelligent athletes believe me when i say hard work will come believe me when you'll see weeks over 90 to 100 miles a week some days where you're running 20 to 25 miles but i don't think i could have handled the last two days any better in terms of trying to make the olympics but dealing with the situation that you have at hand and so i feel sometimes that's what people don't do a good job of people don't often do a good job of dealing with the situation that they have and so you have this big idea you have this big plan you want to run this big race you want to run this big personal best but you get sick you have this big idea you want to run this big personal best you want to run this really good race but you get a bit of an injury discipline always has to win you can start the big idea tomorrow you can start the big idea the day after that and so just be careful on the road to your big big success to your big big pb there's going to be adversity it fucking sucks the day five of my you know road to paris road to the olympics i'm sick but you have to deal with what you're dealt five tips for when you get sick as a runner when you're trying to hit that big goal number one have some sort of factual evidence that you're getting healthy i use my aura ring or the whoop wristband and they're checking rest and heart rate body temperature heart rate variability etc etc because you're emotionally attached you might wake up and think oh my goodness i'm better but that could just be your emotions because you're still linked to the train and you're still emotionally linked to the next big race you want yourself to be healthy and so you might try to justify that you're healthy sooner than you actually are rest and heart rate's a brilliant one to check you can just use your wrist if you put i'll show you you can just put your two fingers you just put your two fingers on your wrist if you have a stopwatch you can just put those two fingers on the wrist and you can check your rest and heart rate a better way to check if you're healthy is actually to take a rest and heart rate laying down and then stand up and see how big a difference there is normally when you're sick when you stand up your rest and heart rate is going to jump quite a bit okay tip two when you've been a bit sick stay hydrated the body goes through it's kind of like detoxing your body or flushing things out but if you stay hydrated you can really help your body start to get healthy again so you should be drinking probably 10 to 12 glasses of water a day and you might want to add in some electrolytes so hydration tablet what I do when I'm starting to get sick is I have a mixture of hydration tablets, but then also something like Noon Immune Builder or Vitamin C and Zinc. And I always try to mix my fluids throughout the day to make sure that I'm getting healthy. Okay, tip number three. Be careful when you're taking lots of medicine for the likes of cough and flu and, you know, mucus, etc. If you're trying to make a decision that you're healthy or not, you need to make that decision when you're not taking the cough medicine. When you take the cough medicine, it suppresses congestion, it suppresses maybe sore head, dizziness, etc., etc. But make a decision that you're healthy when you've been off the cough medicine for more than probably 12 hours. Because you might feel healthy because you're taking all these medications, but once you stop the medication, you might realize I'm not quite healthy yet, so it might not be time to push hard again yet.
Okay, tip number four, when you're starting to resume training, make sure that you don't push too hard too soon. Accept that you've been sick, take a few days a little bit easier, and what you can do is reduce training by maybe 25 to 30% until one of these days you're gonna go for a run, and instead of having that feeling that I got through that run, you might actually start to get this kind of feeling that says, I kind of wanted to go a little bit quicker today. I kind of wanted to push a little bit today. That's when it's time to perhaps bring the training back to 100%. And the reason you take it that little bit easier is to save yourself time. If you push too hard too soon, you can basically, an illness can go from, instead of taking three to four days to, you know, you might still have a bit of a cough, you might still sound a little bit nasally, but if you can get the like viral infection or the strongest bit of the illness to go away, you can actually move on and get back to full training quicker. People that rush those first four days, sometimes their viral infection or the actual bad bit of the illness can hang around for four to six weeks. Treat it with care at the beginning to save yourself time in the long run. Okay, so the final tip today, even if you're having to rest or maybe all you can do is go for a walk and if your body's sore and if you don't feel like running, please don't run. But what you can do is some home mobility, some stretching, some core, little, little and often can help keep the body used to moving. And so I'm gonna show you some little bits of stretching, some little bits of strength stuff that you can do that might really help when you return to doing some running. If you have to take your time because your viral infection or your illness is taking a little bit longer to shift than you'd like, the last thing you want is that when you start back running for your body to be sore, for it not to like exercise because your muscles have essentially switched off. And so by doing three to five minutes of stretching and little bits of core and little bits of strength a day, you can really speed up that process and help your body's durability for when you get back to running. <laughs>